Welcome, Cyclone fans. We're ready for some basketball action here. Friday, December 10th, from Harlan Community High School Gym, where your Cyclones are getting ready to take on the Monarchs of Denison. Denison coming into tonight's contest with an undefeated record of four wins, zero losses. Cyclones as well don't have a blemish on their record. Four, or excuse me, two wins and no losses. They do have a common opponent in Carol Kemper. Cyclones defeated them 64-41. And the Monarchs defeated Kemper 69-59. So relatively close score there by both teams facing the Kemper Knights. Harlan Community Cyclone Pep Band under the direction of Mr. Bill Carney is getting the crowd warmed up here. We'll meet our starters. And the uh, National Anthem was played before the girls game, so then we'll get ready for that opening tip. Tonight, looking at uh, things on paper, Cyclones are going to have have to do some things in terms of how they're going to defend. Number 22, Lance Arkfeld, 6'8", sophomore. And they have Niall Manuel, 6'7", senior. So they do have some heights. Manuel comes off the bench, but Arkfeld is a starter, averaging eight points. Cyclones, tallest starter that they'll put out there is 6'2", Connor Frame. So we're getting ready for starting lineup here, but uh, Cyclones are coached by head coach Mitch Osborne, assisted by Chad Swanson and Kevin Osborne and Gabe Boffman, Dennison Schleswig, head coach Derek Fink, and Ricky Torres. Number five, Matthew Welts, 5'11", senior for the Monarchs. Number 11, Jackson Wessel, a 6'1", junior. Number 12, Carson Senches, 6'1", junior, averaging 14 points a game. Number 14, Aiden Scuttinga, 5'10", senior, averaging 13 points a game. And number 22, Lance Arkfeld, a 6'8", sophomore, that averages 8 points a game. And now for the Cyclones. Number 23, Brad Curran, a 5'10 junior. Number 25, Brayton Schechinger. He's a 6'1 senior. Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall. Number 33, 6'1 junior. Number 35, Jacob Birch, a 6'1 junior. And rounding things out, number 43, Connor Frame, a 6'2 senior. In the center circle will be Arkfeld for the Monarchs and frame for the Cyclones with the opening tip. And the opening tip is going to go to the Monarchs. I mean, number 12, Carson Suchins at the point. Cyclones opening up in a little man to man defense. Three point shot up, no good. And there's going to be a foul. It was Arkfeld having position on Aiden Hall. Aiden Hall had kind of an arm in his back and is going to be whistled for the personal foul. First personal teams first. Three-point shot up, no good. And there's an offensive rebound. We talked about rebounding in the pregame. There's going to be a turnover. 
on the Monarchs as the bounce pass from Markfeld tried to get into the corner but bounced on the end line. Brad Curran setting things up for Harlan Community. All on a little spin move and he's going to get whistled for a travel. A little spin move. Cyclones again get set up in their half court man defense. Each team trying to break each other down with some dribble penetration. Obviously, the Monarchs are going to get some low post touches to Arkfeld with the height advantage. A little Euro step and layup for number 12, Carson Suchens, and that's the first points of the game, and they go to the Monarchs as they take a lead, two to nothing. Frame with it off the dribble drive. Now Schechinger. Frame's going to pull up three. No good. Rebounded by the Monarchs. And they try and get the ball to Arkfeld. He loses it. Turnover on the Monarchs. Ball goes into. Hall, and there's going to be a foul whistled against number 22, Lance Arkfeld, his first personal foul. Kasparov comes in for Schechinger. 6-11 left to play. 2 to nothing is the score in favor of the Monarchs. Birch from the corner. Jacob Birch for three. Birch gets the Cyclones on the scoreboard, and they now lead 3-2 to two over the Monarchs. Try and get the ball into Arkfeld. Kind of a poor pass there. Turnover number three for Dennison. Current on the dribble drive. Whistle number 14, Aiden Scuttinga with the personal foul. His first team second into the lineup now is number one, Luke Weebers. Ball goes into Hall. Hall's shot is blocked, and that's going to be the second personal foul on Arkfeld. So the 6-8, Arkfeld picks up his second foul. Hall's first free throw is up no good. Be a substitute for Arkfeld in the Monarchs, number 13, Gavin Hipner. be a foul called on Casper Bauer. Three to two Cyclones, five and a half to play. Offense is struggling to kind of get some things flowing here on, by both teams. Low post play inside, up and good for the Monarchs. Four three, Dennison Schleswig. Shot goes up by Kern, air ball no good. Weaver's coming away with it. He's trying to go in transition, layup no good. Right there to pick things up was the Monarchs. Their put back is no good. Hall with the rebound. Frame puts up a three-pointer. Connor Frame with the three-point bucket. Cyclones with six points off of two made three-point buckets. 
And Harlan Community now has the lead, 6-4. Three-pointer up from the corner, no good. Rebounded by Casper Bauer. Hall with it now in transition. Cyclones don't really have numbers. He gets it to Casper Bauer. Casper Bauer puts up a three. That is no good. Weaver's with it on the sideline. Long three-point shot is up and good by number 12, Carson Suchens. He's got five. Little runner up by frame is no good. There's going to be an offensive foul. Offensive foul called on Weavers. Into the Cyclone lineup, number 25, Scheckinger, and 55, Rice. So Franz Rice, the Cyclones. Tallest player is going to get out there. Rice is 6'5", 6'5", sophomore. The score is now 7-6 in favor of the Monarchs. And there's going to be a foul is going to be called on the Monarchs. Cyclones get the ball inbounded. Three and a half minutes to play in quarter number one. It's going to be a turnover on Brad Kern. Second turnover on the Cyclones. Three turnovers for the Monarchs. Turnover on Dennison. Kern with the layup. Brad Kern with the basket. Four turnovers on the Monarchs. Cyclones now back with the lead, 8-7. All goes down to the low post. Kick out, and but there's going to be a pull-up three. Nobody. Ball is batted out of bounds off the Cyclones. We'll stay with the Monarchs, 240. Six left to play in quarter number one. Cyclones lead 8-7. Ball getting reversed around the perimeter. Cyclones switching things out front. There's a partially blocked shot by Hall. Weaver's with it on the dribble drive and there's gonna be an offensive foul. That's the second offensive foul on Weaver's, I believe. Two personal fouls on Weavers. 2.29 left to play in quarter number one. Again, Cyclones lead 8 7. Fred Kern with the dribble drive basket. He's got four points. Cyclones lead by three 10 7. Pull up jumper is up, no good. Rebounded by Rice for the Cyclones. Cyclones in transition. Birch, he's going to be fouled on the dribble drive, so he's going to go to the free throw line. Fouls on Matthew Welts for Dennison. Shot up good by Birch. He's got four points off a free throw and three pointer. And the second one is good. Birch with five points and the Cyclones lead with a minute 55 to play in quarter number one, 12 7.
Long three-point shot up, no good. Offensive rebound put back is no good. Spins up on the rim. And the third shot of the possession for the Monarchs is finally good by Aiden Schuttinga. Twelve ten, Cyclones lead by two. Minute thirty one to play. A running pass there by Birch. Now Curran's gonna go up and he puts a shot up in good. Curran with six points. Travel violation on the Monarchs. Dennis and Schleswig picking up full court here with a minute and one second left to play in quarter number one. Birch on the dribble drive along the baseline. in on 30 seconds left to play. Cyclones leading 16 to 10. Jennison trying to hold the ball here. The last shot of the quarter. Ten seconds left to play. That is up, no good. That's gonna get to exactly 1.0 seconds to play here in this opening quarter with the Cyclones leading 16 to 10. One quarter in the books. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with second quarter action to play. You're watching Cyclone Basketball on HLTV, Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Keith Motors. Cyclone Lanes. Shelby County State Bank. United Bank of Iowa. Holly Jones Funeral Home. KNOD Radio, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, and the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. Out of the timeout, it will be Cyclone basketball to start quarter number two. Cyclones with the lead, 16 to 10 over the Monarchs from Denison. Red Kern across the timeline. Cyclones. Kind of a little four out or five out motion here. Aiden Hall on the dribble drive and he's gonna be fouled on the drive. 18 fouls for the Monarchs. So we'll send Aiden Hall to the free throw line for a one and one. He's 0 for one from the free throw line 
Now 0 for 2, but Jacob Birch comes away with the offensive rebound. Now a three-point basket is up by Connor Frame. Two three-point baskets by Frame. The Cyclones lead 19 to 10. Dennison really playing a little five out motion here. Trying to get it some dribble drive. Shot goes up, no good. Frame pull up jumper, that's no good. Rebounded by Birch and he is fouled. Jacob Birch to the free throw line. He's two for two from there tonight. And two of three, but he'll have another one as he's in the act of shooting. Birch with his second free throw attempt, and that one is up, and that is no good. Rebounded by the Monarchs. Seven minutes to play in quarter number two. 19-10 Cyclones. the dribble drive, that is number 12, Carson Suchens. He's got seven. 19 to 12, Harlan Community with the lead. There's a turnover by the Cyclones. Turnover number four. Six and a half to play. Suchin brings the ball across the timeline. And shot is up and good for the Monarchs. 19-14 is the score. Bucket was good by Weavers there. Long three for Frame, no good. Rebounded by Jace Goobles. Dribble drive. All gets in and another Cyclone turnover. Their fifth. Dennis and Schleswig really trying to space things out. And they have Arkfeld back into the lineup at 6'8 down on the block. He's got two fouls. They do a little pick and roll. And there's going to be a foul called on number 21, Casper Bauer, I believe. It is. Schechinger in for Harlan Community as Tegan has two personal fouls. Dennison inbounding on the baseline. Ball goes down low to Arkfeld. Ball goes off of Arkfeld. Turnover number six for the Monarchs. Cyclones break the press and Red Kern attacks. He's got eight. 21 14. Cyclones. Three point shot up, no good. Rebounded by number 11, Jackson Wessel. 21 16. Frame's going to put up a three, and that's good. Connor Frame with the bucket. He's got three three-pointers, nine points. 24-16, Cyclones. Cyclones really forcing the Monarchs out on the arc. Dennison doesn't really mind that too much anyway, I don't believe, is... 
They want a dribble drive, and there's a turnover on Weavers, a travel call. Ball deflected out of bounds. Cyclones maintain possession on the baseline. Monarchs putting on some full court pressure here. Red Curran brings it across the timeline with four minutes to play. 24-16 Cyclones, and there's a turnover by Curran. And that's Weavers with the wild shot there. Three-point shot by Frame, no good. Rebounded by Birch, and that is up and good. Birch with the bucket. There's going to be a foul. Weavers kind of got caught there. Trap went up for a shot, and they whistled the foul on the Cyclones. Four team fouls on Harlan Community. Two foul personal fouls on Hall, and it's going to send the 68% free throw shooter Weavers to the free throw line for two. And it's up no good. Three twenty-seven left. Weavers with one more free throw attempt for the Monarchs, and that one is good. He goes one for two. 26-17 Cyclones, 3.23 left to play in the half. Cyclones get set up in the half court here. Birch is going to fire up a three, no good. Rebounded by the Monarchs, and there's going to be a foul called on Brad Curran. Monarchs basketball on the sideline. Weavers from the top of the key goes by Curran. Weavers with the bucket. 26 19. An offensive foul there on the screen. Sixteen foul on the Cyclones. 26-19, just under three minutes to play here in the first half. Cyclones led the majority of this whole half. Layup up and good by number 12, Carson Suchins. He's got nine. Ball gets to the side line there to Schechinger. Schechinger try feeding Rice, and it's a turnover on Harlan Community. Five-point game, 26-21 Cyclones with two minutes to go. Weavers goes in for a, in another basket. He's got a little spin move he likes to put on there on the dribble drive. And it's a three-point game right now at 26-23. Cyclones by three, minute 40 left. Another Cyclone turnover. They've got eight. The Monarchs can pull within one or tie it with a two or three-point field goal here. Pull up two point jumpers, no good. Rebounded by Birch. Birch trying to go 
Cyclones don't really have numbers. Frame holds up and waits for the rest of his teammates to get down. Now the Cyclones getting things spread. Schechinger on the sideline. Going to be a three-point shot up by Curran and Brad Curran with a three-point bucket. With a minute to play, the Cyclones lead by six, 29-23. Dribble drive by Weaver's no good. They're going to call it a jump ball. And on the alternate possession arrow, it's going to favor Dennison. Monarch basketball on the baseline. Run a little out of bounds play, a three pointer from the top of the key, misses badly. No good. And the Cyclones have it across the timeline with 40 seconds to go. Curran. We keep giving him the left hand. I'm not sure Dennison scouted the Cyclones knowing that he's left handed, but they're giving him the left hand drive the whole night here. Curran to the free throw line. He's not shot a free throw yet. So his first trip, and that one is up no good. He'll have a second opportunity as it was in the act of shooting, but then also it's because Dennison Schleswig has committed 10 plus fouls, and the second one is good. 35 seconds left to play in the half. Cyclones lead by seven, 30-23. And Schleswig really trying to spread the court here and take advantage of some dribble penetration lanes. Arkfeld comes out and tries running a high post screen. And try and get him the ball at 6-8. And the Monarchs turn it over, and then Brad Kearns turns it right back over. And a shot at the buzzer is going to count. Two point basket at the buzzer is going to get us to a score of Harlan Community 30, Denison Schleswig 25. So, had some excitement there in that second quarter. We're going to take a quick break. We'll get some halftime stats and be back for second half action to play. You're watching Cyclone Basketball on HLTV Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Keith Motors. Cyclone Lanes. Shelby County State Bank. United Bank of Iowa. Holly Jones Funeral Homes. KNOD Radio. Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance. And the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. Welcome back, Cyclone fans, as we get ready for second half action of play here at Harlan Community High School Gym, where your Cyclones lead the Monarchs of Denison Schleswig by a score of 30 to 25. Cyclones out for Denison 16-10 in the first quarter. And then Denison Schleswig out scored the Cyclones 15-14 in quarter number two to get us to Cyclones 30, Monarchs 25. Unofficially scoring Brad Kern 12, Aiden Hall 2, Jacob Birch 7, and Connor Frame 9. The Cyclone ball out on the 
sideline. Brad Kern to set things up for the Cyclones. A dribble drive by Frame now. It's Hall, and there's going to be a travel call. Connor Frame took too many steps there. That's turnover number nine for the Cyclones. Ball goes inside to Arkfeld. Arkfeld puts up a little baby hook that's no good. Cyclones come away with it. Ball got rebounded by to Birch. Birch then tried getting it to frame. Cyclones lose it on the turnover. Pull up jumper is good. 30, 27 Cyclones, minute into this third quarter. Ball getting reversed around now. Brayton Schechinger is gonna put up a three, no good. Rebounded by the Monarchs. And in transition, transition Brayton Schechinger, nice job getting back. He gets the steal, turnover Monarchs, their eighth of the evening. Little backdoor cut by Schechinger, kicks it out. Ball getting reversed around the perimeter, and then a shot is up by number 12, Carson Suchins. Things are getting close here, 30, 29 Cyclones. Ball goes inside to frame. He was posting up number five, Welts. Third foul on him. First team foul. Birch with it on the inbound play. And a fouls whistled on number 14, Scuttinga. Put Birch to the free throw line. He's 0 for 2 from the free throw line here tonight, but he'll have two more attempts. for three. And finally one falls for Jacob. One for four. The score is Cyclones 31, Monarchs 29. Trapped on the baseline is Monarch player number 11, Jackson Wessel. He got out of it. Ball's getting reversed around. Now a little dribble drive. Shots put up. No good. Tipped out of there. Cyclone's kind of getting a little out hustled with things. Shot blocked by Hall. Wessel gets the rebound off the main or off the block shot. And that's Arkfeld with the rebound. But he is fouled. I was called on number 25, Brayton Schechinger. Keegan Kasperbauer into the lineup for Schechinger. He picks up his first foul. Monarchs to inbound on the baseline. Arkfeld with it in the corner. Weber's is going to fire up a three. No good. Rebounded by Birch. A little two-on-one break here. 
Shot is up no good by Casper Bauer. Birch with the offensive rebound. That's no good. Casper Bauer with the putback. Score the basket, Teagan, and he's fouled by number one, Weavers. So Casper Bauer will go to the free throw line for a three-point play attempt. 33-29 Cyclones. Right, this is 33-29. It stays. Fifteen foot jumper up, no good. Rebounded by Casper Bauer. He brings it across the timeline, gets it to Frame. Frame goes up for a lip. Good. Frame with the bucket. Four minutes to play in this third quarter. There's going to be a foul on Aiden Hall. Hall trying to guard Artfeld. Hall giving up about six, seven inches. as to whose ball it is, but they're going to give it to the Cyclones. Shot up by Frame, no good. Rebounded by the Monarchs. Three-point attempt is up and good. Is number 12, Suchins. And the Monarchs are within three at 35-32 Cyclones. Foul on number five, Matthew Welts. Not sure why he doesn't even have a height advantage. And on that... Uh, Wing to post entry pass. He wants to re try and reach over the top and tip it away. And he wants to argue about the foul. So kind of two not so smart things happening there. 329 left. There's a turnover on the inbound play. 11 turnovers for the Cyclones. Three point shot up, no good, but rebounded by. The Monarchs, Cyclones got to get after things in the low post area, and there's going to be a foul called on Franz Rice, number 55. Second on Rice, third team foul of the half. Three-point shot is up and good by Carson Suchins. And things are all tied up at 35 apiece. Suchins has 21 points on the night. Be a foul whistled out front on number 11, Jackson Wessel. Five team fouls on the Monarchs for this second half. First on Wessel. Kaspar is going to put up a three from the corner. That's no good. Transition for the Monarchs. Cyclone's got to identify where Suchins is at at all times. He's got the hot hand from three-point land. Ball getting reversed around the perimeter, trying to get some post touches on the back side here is Suchins. Little runner up, no good. Rebounded by Casper Bauer. Two minutes to play, 35-35. That goes inside to Rice. And that was a 
A sprained ankle, but the player gets up, kind of hobbling all right. Franz Rice with the bucket. 37-35 Cyclones. Shot comes up short for Suchins. That wild shot goes up by Curran. Cyclone's kind of putting up some wild ones here. Subs into the contest for the Monarchs and the Cyclones. Hall comes back in for Harlan Community. Arkfeld and Weber's come in for Dennison Schleswig. Cyclones have it on the baseline. Birch is going to put up a three, and that's good. Jacob Birch, he's got ten. Pump move, no good. A lot of shot attempts here. The Monarchs are able to get, but the Cyclones do finally come away with the defensive rebound. A little dribble drive along the baseline. Birch puts up a shot that's no good. Rebounded by Hall. And he's going to be fouled by Suchins. 40, 35 Cyclones with 50 seconds to play in this third quarter. Send Hall to the free throw line. Hall's one of four tonight and one of five. Hall with his second free throw, and that one is good. Hall with three points. It's be an offensive foul. That's three fouls on Weavers. All three are offensive charging fouls. He like or four fouls. And three of them are charging fouls. Wants to go in there and with that little spin move, Cyclones know it's coming and they get planted in there and take a charge. Nice job there by Casper Bauer. I think he's the one that's been taking the either two or three of the charges on Weber's. Twenty-five seconds left to play in the third quarter. Again, Cyclones up 41-35. Down to 10 seconds left. I was going to kick it out to Birch. Birch is going to put up a three. And Jacob Birch hits a three-pointer to close out the third quarter. He's got 13. And the Cyclones lead now 44-35. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with fourth quarter action to play. You're watching Cyclone Basketball on HLTV, Channel 15. Programming brought to you by these great sponsors. Keast Motors. Cyclone Lanes. Shelby County State Bank. United Bank of Iowa. Holly Jones Funeral Homes. KNOD Radio. Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, and the Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. Well, out of the timeout, folks, we've got a nine-point Cyclone lead, 44-35. Harlan Community, as we start the fourth quarter, Cyclones outscored 
the Monarchs 14 to 10 in that third quarter. Now we're getting ready for the final stanza. This Hawkeye 10 matchup here from Harlan Community High School gym. Three-point shot from the wing, no good. Hall with the rebound. All in the dribble drive kick. It's going to be Casper Bauer. Casper Bauer's three-pointer is good. 47-35. Cyclones by 12. The three-pointer up, no good. Sometimes I don't understand some philosophies. You got a 6'8 guy from Denison, and they really don't <laughs> utilize him down on the post. Cyclones have a 6'2 person trying to guard him, and they still don't try to get him the ball down low. It's a good thing for Harlan the Cyclones. There's going to be a foul on the dribble drive. Coach Derek Fink wants to take a timeout and talk things over with his squad. And we want to talk things over with you, thanking some fine sponsors for making this live broadcast possible here tonight for you folks at home. And then again on some rebroadcast opportunities, those sponsors being Peterson Family Wellness Center, the Lewis Family Aquatic Complex, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, KNOD Radio, Holly Jones Funeral Home, United Bank of Iowa, Shelby County State Bank, Cyclone Lanes, and Keist Motors. Again, thank you to those businesses for making live broadcast of Cyclone Athletics and activities. You folks in your living room. And then again on a rebroadcast basis. Cyclone Girls defeated the Monarchs 72-37 in the opener, and now the Cyclone boys are taking care of business, 47-35. Cyclone JV girls also had a victory, 53-17. So, so far, the trifecta is almost happening here. As out of the timeout, Aiden Hall goes to the free throw line. That one's good, Aiden Hall. He's got four. And he's got five with that made free throw. Forty-nine, thirty-five cyclones, fourteen point lead. And a steal by Aiden Hall. Birch from the corner, his little pump fake, and he has the dribble drive, and Jacob Birch, he's got 15, leading the way for the Cyclones, and it's 51-35. Cyclones, the three-point game not too long ago, even a one-point game, and Cyclones have exploded here with some points. Three-point shot going up for frame. That's no good. Rebounded inside by Hall. That's no good. He's going to be fouled. That foul is going to be on Weavers, and if it is, that's his fifth. Weber's to the free throw line. Hall, Hayden Hall gets to the free throw line off the foul of Weber's. Hall makes the first one. It's his sixth point. And the second one's no good. Rebounded by Arkfeld. Marks with it down on the 
Offensive end, Cyclones in a little man-to-man -man defense. Double drive, and they're gonna call a foul on Brad Curran. They're gonna call a switch, and they're gonna call the foul on Birch. Monarchs to inbound on the baseline here, 544 left in the contest. Jumper from the right wing is up no good. Birch is going to run down the rebound, and there's a foul. There's a fifth foul for Aiden Scuttinga. Birch with the free throw, and that's good. 16 points for Birch. Jacob will have a second one here, and that one is up, and that is good as well. 17 points for Birch. Weber's is out there on the floor, so must give that last foul when they thought he fouled out to somebody else. So he just came in as a substitute there on the free throw. And off the deflection. Possession will stay with the Monarchs. Number 12, Carson Suchins into the lineup. As well as number two, Jake Fink. Ball goes into Artfeld, and he is going to be fouled by Casper Bauer. Artfeld to the free throw line. He's a 50% free throw shooter. He has yet to score here tonight. 6'8 player, and still not in the scorebook. Cyclone up by Artfeld, no good. Rebounded by the Cyclones, five minutes to play. Cyclones lead, 54-35. Cyclones so far have outscored Denison, especially 10 to nothing here in this fourth quarter. Turnover on the play there, a travel call. So Dennison has possession. Three point shot up, no good. Rebounded by Suchin. He puts a shot up, offensive put back in, good. And number 12, Carson Suchin has 23 to lead all scorers for. The Monarchs, Coach Derek Fink wants to call a timeout. And again, we want to really applaud those fine businesses and sponsors for making this live broadcast come to your TV at home there tonight, as well as on some rebroadcasts, those being Keist Motors, Cyclone Lanes, Shelby County State Bank, United Bank of Iowa, Polly Jones Funeral Home, KNOD Radio, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance and Peterson Wellness Center and Lewis Family Aquatic Complex. Out of the timeout, Cyclones have a 54-37 lead. Frame with it across half court. 
Now on the dribble drive, he goes in. Connor Frame with the bucket. He's got 13. 56-37. Cyclones have really just blown this open here in the late third quarter and, and uh, the fourth quarter here. And those two third quarter and then this far into the fourth have outscored Denison Schleswig by a score of 26 to 12. So outscored him by 14. There's going to be a foul. Foul is going to be whistled on Aiden Hall. It's going to send Weavers to the free throw line. Free throw is good. Second free throw for Weavers is good as well. Weavers with nine on the night. Bucket by Connor Frame. A little running layup there. A Suchin's it's no good. Monarch to the free throw line here after the foul. And that free throw is good. And a second one coming. Second free throw is up and that one is no good. Rebounded by Hall. Aiden Hall on the dribble drive, puts a shot up, no good. And then the turnover, Connor Frame gets it. An offensive foul. Offensive foul. Called on Frame. Shot up, no good. Rebounded by Birch, and then there's going to be a foul called on the Monarchs' Fink. Birch with the free throw attempt. And that one is good. Jacob Birch, 18 points. Birch will have a second one coming. And that one's up no good. And then there's going to be a nice hustle play by Brayton Scheckinger causing a Held ball in the alternate possession arrow. Ball tried getting into the low post area there, tipped out of bounds by the Monarchs, so we'll stay with the Cyclones. 239 left to play. Cyclones lead 59-40.
Casper Bauer from the corner. Tegan Casper Bauer with the three point basket. Vikings outscored the Monarchs 18 to 5 here in this fourth quarter. Weavers with the pull up jumper. He's got an 11. 62 42. With two minutes to play. Cyclone's going to get in the floor spread here now. And Coach Mitch Osborne wanted to get some subs into the contest as well as maybe being a little worried where the ref was on that closely guarded five-second call. At a score of Harlan Community 62, Denison Schleswig 42. A little over a minute to play here in this Hawkeye 10 matchup. Again, Cyclones have kind of blown the doors open here in this third in the third quarter, outscoring Denison Schleswig 14-10. And in this fourth quarter, outscoring the Monarchs 18-7 at this point to take a 20-point lead, 62-42. So out of the timeout, it will be Cyclone basketball on the sideline. Tegan Casper Bauer to inbound. Cyclone's just kind of running some clock here. Timeout. And we want to thank our sponsors for making this live broadcast and rebroadcast later on possible. And that comes to you from these sponsors of Peterson Family Wellness Center, Lewis Family Aquatic Complex, Shelby County Farmers Mutual and Century Farm Insurance, KNOD Radio, Polly Jones Funeral Home. United Bank of Iowa, Shelby County State Bank, Cyclone Lanes, and Keith Motors. So again, thank you to those fine businesses for their contribution to make this broadcast possible. Out of the timeout, minute 18 left in the contest. Cyclones lead 62-42. Cyclones just kind of playing some keep away here as we close in on one minute to play in the contest. And there's a turnover, but Cade Sears gets it right back. And over and back call is discussion here whether it was an over and back call or if the Monarchs tipped it into the backcourt. They're going to reverse the call. Ball goes down low to Arkfeld for the Cyclones. 40 seconds left to play. Scheckinger with it. He tries to get the ball down low to Jace Goobles. He turns around. His shot's no good. Rebounded by the Monarchs. 15 seconds left to play. And the 
Buckets good for the Monarchs. And that's going to bring us to the end of this Hawkeye 10 matchup where the Cyclones come away victorious by a score of 62-44. Pretty close game the whole first half. At the end of quarter number one, it was 16-10 Cyclones. At the half, it was 30-25 Cyclones. And then in that third quarter, the Cyclones outscored Denison and Schleswig 14 to 10. And then in the fourth quarter, things got to where Harlan Community doubled up the Monarchs 18 to 9 to come away with the 62-44 win. Unofficially scoring wise for the Cyclones, Jacob Birch led the way with 18, Connor Frame with 15, Brad Curran with 12, Tegan Kasperbauer with eight, Franz Rice with two, Aiden Hall with six. With the win, it'll improve the Cyclone record to three wins, zero losses, and it will put a blemish on the Monarchs record with four wins and one loss. So a good game here from Harlan Community High School, Jim. And Jonathan North on the camera, Bill Mueller on the play-by-play. -play. You've been watching Cyclone Basketball on HLTV Channel 15, where it's always great to be a Cyclone.